So I was on YouTube the other day and I was looking through some videos and I came across one that said Victron Energy should make this. And I thought, huh, sounds pretty cool. So I watched it and at the end, I thought, you know what? Victron should make this. Somebody should make it, but nobody makes it. So we made it. So stick around, we'll show you how to do it yourself. Hey guys, it's Mark. So if you're new to our channel, my wife Tanya and I are converting our 2019 Ram Pro Master 2500 into a little home on wheels and we are in the middle of our electrical build right now. So if you're interested in this kind of content, go ahead and smash the subscribe button and follow along with us. Okay, so our little electrical project. Now, just so you know, let's put it out there, Victron Energy is not endorsing this. They are not sponsoring us in any way. I'm pretty sure they don't know I'm alive. So we're not getting anything from them. So this is pretty much just some uh, experience and a way to use their products in a kind of a kind of a unique way to put them together. I did follow a video to do this and I kind of changed a couple things. So let me take you through exactly what this is and how we built it. So this basically combines three products. It combines the um, battery on off switch, which is this red thing here. And this is made by Blue Sea Systems. Now this will attach to the positive cable coming from the battery and it will be the main shutoff for the battery. This is a shunt that comes off the negative part of the battery. This is also made by Victron Energy and this is the BMV 712. This unit allows us to not only monitor the battery power from a little meter that they give us, but we can also do it remotely through a Bluetooth connection. And then there is this, which is the Victron Energy Lynx distributor. Now, I have to admit, you might be thinking what I was thinking. I first saw this and I thought, there's no way I'm paying 200 bucks for what's essentially a bus bar, because I thought that too. So what I did was I bought all that stuff. So we bought the bus bars, we bought fuses, we bought fuse holders, and then you need screws to attach this all to where it's gonna be housed. Then you need little jumper wires to go between these. And then the jumper wires need lugs on each end. And what you end up with is a ton of little wires, a ton of connections, and a ton of screws that have to hold this stuff in place. And this ends up being way more expensive than this. So that's why I'm a big fan of this. Why else do I like this? Um, not only does it make the management of the wiring nice and neat, but it gives you the ability to monitor the fuses so you can actually see the real-time status of all the fuses that make up the circuitry. So the way this works is the negative part of your connection comes into here and there's a negative bus bar, which is where the shunt is attached. The positive wires come to a positive uh, cable, a positive terminal, your fuse sits across here, like this, and then uh, this reaches the positive bus bar, and again, this comes from the battery, and then this goes out to all your other stuff. So it's a nice, neat way to not only hold your fuses and monitor the fuses, but it makes the management of the wiring nice and easy. So overall, I think this is a great solution. So when we start to uh, build this, the first thing I did was I attached the battery switch to the positive bus bar and the shunt to the negative bus bar. So you can see the bus bar comes all the way here and ends here. There's a hole there. Same thing on the positive side. Now, as you would expect, this hole was too small for this bolt and this hole, the hole in here was too small for the bolt that went through the battery switch. So I had to make them a little bigger and I used this tool I think they call this a step bit, but I basically used it to make these holes bigger. If you don't have one of these, you can actually use a drill bit. The problem is that this metal is really soft and it starts to shave off and binds the drill bit. So you may need to put a little lubricant in there to get the, uh, the bit all the way through. Now, the next problem I had was once I had connected the battery switch and the shunt to the Lynx distributor, all three of them kind of sat at different heights. So this uh, shunt pretty much sat the lowest. This battery switch sat the highest. So the whole thing was kind of rocking back and forth. So what I did was I cut two platforms. This is one of the platforms and right now I have it uh, adhered to the Lynx distributor with some of that 3M really sticky tape, but I'll eventually drive screws through here into it anyway as I attach it to our platform. 
The other platform I had to build was for this thing, and you can see this right here. So um, this is basically, uh, I think this is three and a half inches wide by three and a half inches long, and the height is 1930 seconds. So there actually isn't any plywood that I could find that has a height of 1930 seconds, so I had to put two pieces of wood together, I, screw, I uh, glued it together, and then I hit it with a sander until I had this down to 1930 seconds. This piece right here is four and a half inches by nine inches, and the height is 730 seconds. Now, once we've got this built and these two pieces attached, and we've got the platform attached to the bottom of here, we can go ahead and start working on this. So this gets a little bit tricky. Luckily, I have a spare one to show you what I did. So this platform is, is glued down to the base that we're gonna be putting all our electrical components on. We're actually putting the electrical components onto this board and then the entire board will attach into the van because it's a little easier to deal with. Now, um, first thing I did was put a screw through here and put this into the platform to make it nice and sturdy. But before I did that, I dropped four number 10 nuts into here, which are now sitting down in here and it will accept number 10, two and a half inch bolts so that when I go ahead and install this, I can drop the bolts right into here and they have something to screw into. The problem here is you really need bolts that are about two and a quarter inches. They don't sell that, at least not that I could find. So two inches is too short. Two and a half inches is a little bit too long. So before I, before I mounted this, I went ahead and marked the location of the holes and I drilled a little hole with a drill bit just about that thickness through this wood so that these would have a place to go down into. So now you can see they dropped in and I can screw them all and hold this piece nice in place. So that's basically the, um, the physical part of how you build this entire thing. So now that this thing is built, I'm gonna start uh, putting some wires onto it. So I've got these massive four aught cables that are going to my battery. And of course, the lugs on the cables don't fit onto here either. So I had to use a step bit to enlarge these lugs a little bit. And now I'll be able to screw them onto here and into here. Um, why am I using such big cables? So we have a 3000 watt inverter. 4O is what's recommended by Renogy. And if you don't want to listen to them, you can just do some math. So a 3000 watt inverter, Assuming it's about 90% effective, that means you've got to actually put in more than 3,000 watts to get 3,000 watts out. And that calculation comes out to about 3,333 watts. So that's what's got to go in to get 3,000 watts on the outside. And in order to do that, that equates to about 270 amps, which means you've got to have four dot, four, uh, four out cable. So use what the manufacturer recommends, and that's what we're going to use here as well. So. This negative side will attach to our shunt. And the positive side will attach to the battery switch, and this is where it gets a little, little tricky. So once you screw this down in place, you really can't access this nut anymore. So you've got to do this while you still got access. And by the way, once you put this screw in here to hold this uh, base down, you'll probably have to break a little of this plastic separator to allow the screw to sit in here. At this point, we're gonna tighten these. Here. And there are torque spec specifications probably with each of these, so later I'll go back and make sure that the torque is correct. But for now, I'm just going to tighten them with a wrench.
Okay, so this can now go to our battery bank and we can now attach this straight down to the board. So at this point, all the mechanical stuff is done. We've gone ahead and connected our big old cables to our battery switch and our shunt. The shunt and the battery switch are connected to the Lynx distributor. Everything is bolted down and nice and secure. So the mechanical stuff is done. Um, there is one electrical thing that we need to deal with. So there are LEDs on here that manage, that will sense the state of the fuse. So when one of these, where are they? When one of these mega fuses blows, an LED will tell us. And I think you can actually send that info to a servo GX or some other thing so you can monitor it remotely. I'm still working on that one. But there are LEDs that will monitor the status of the fuses. Now, Victron Energy says that you cannot use these unless you have another one of their products. And the reason is that these LEDs work on five volts. Now, as you know, we have a 12 volt system. The only thing we have is 12 volts, so there's really no way for us to power a five volt LED, except from what they claim with one of their other systems. Not entirely true, there's a way around it. So when you buy the Lynx distributor, you get one of these cables with it. I think it's an RJ9 or RJ11 cable. So it's got two of these plastic connectors on the end of it. One of them fits into here and the other end will fit into another Victron Energy product that will allow us to feed five volts into this port and light up those LEDs. But there's a way around it. So if you remember, because we're connected to the battery, we have 12 volts on these bus bars. So if we could find a way to convert 12 volts down to five volts, we could actually power these LEDs. So I'm gonna go ahead and link a video from explorislife.com. He shows you how to turn their cable into a converter using one of these little guys. And when you, have, when you order these, you'll have to order three at a time, unfortunately. So you'll have two of them left to do nothing with. This basically takes in, uh, this little thing takes in 12 volts on one side and puts out five volts on the other side. So it was, I guess there's a resistor in here that kills some of the voltage. This has to get attached to the cable that came with it. And that video does a great job of showing exactly how to do it. So I'm not even gonna try because they do a fantastic job of it. But what you'll end up with is 12 volts coming in here, going through that reducer, and five volts coming out here. So once you're done, you'll plug the plastic piece into this port here. You will run this, and I think it's easiest if you run it under this wire. I'm gonna tuck this away and put this back. We'll tuck this down in here. And now with the remaining um, ends, we have to connect the black side to the negative bus bar, which is here and we have to connect the red side to the positive bus bar, which is here and here. So we'll just go ahead and connect those. And it would be better actually connected here, but the wire doesn't stretch that far. So once we put a fuse in here, there'll be a direct connection. So this now allows us to put 12 volts here, get five volts through this cable and power these LEDs. So I'm gonna head and show. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this works. So I've got a um, a 12 volt DC adapter here that plugs into the wall and gives me 12 volts. This is actually pretty convenient to have when you're doing some van building. So if you've got to test a circuit before you get your batteries, you can use a 12 volt DC thing and test your circuits. So I'm gonna to touch one end to the negative and the other end to the positive, and you'll see that those LEDs are gonna light up. And now they all go out and just the middle one is lit, showing you that it has power. So we've taken 12 volts across our 
bus bars, turned it into five volts, fed it into here, and now this thing works as though it was connected to a separate five volt source. Now we've got the electrical and the mechanical stuff, and we can go ahead and start feeding our wires from our other components into the Lynx distributor. The only thing left to know is when I first got this thing, the, it comes with the, uh, the decal turned around, so it assumes you're going to install it this way. Uh, it assumes you're going to install it this way with the open ends down. Because of the way my battery and the inverter were positioned, it was better if we did it this way. So they actually give you a separate decal so you can put it upside down so you can read the writing even when, it's, even when the unit is technically upside down. So that is it for this video. We're not going to go into the entire electrical system. We'll do that on another video where we describe how we connected everything, what wires we used, and what kind of devices we used. But that's it for today. Just a quick video to show you how we made this specific piece. So again, thanks for joining us. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. If you like the content, give us a thumbs up and comment if you want to know anything that we can tell you about how to build this. And we'll try to link the videos so you can actually make this thing yourself. It's really convenient and keeps things nice and organized on your electrical display. So again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.